Hey guys, uh, this is what we're gonna be making in this video. This is the covers to the new Remnants Lovely Layers mini album printable template. Um, so this is what I came up with and check this out, watch. The, whoops, <laughs> I grabbed the wrong piece. So check this out. Look, this envelope here, it removes completely from the cover of the mini album. And then here's a little note or a place that you can write a note about what's going on. And then inside the envelope is still functional. Well, I said that. <laughs> um, the insert comes out and you can write in that as well. So, and then that is also magnetized. So if you would like to see how I did this, then keep watching. Hey guys. I am so excited. We finally get to start on our first uh, mini album using the new printable templates, The Remnants Lovely Layers. Um, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. And as usual, the links to the printables will be in the description box below as well as the playlist to The Remnants Lovely Layers. So for this particular mini album, we're gonna be using a paper line. Um, it's called a Prima. Love Story by Frank Garcia. There we go, can you see it better? <laughs> and what I've done is I've went through the paper pad. This is the 12 by 12. We are printing directly onto the paper for this album. Uh, this was actually designed to be used with your large cutoff pieces, which is the piece you cut off to run it through your printer. But the first album we're gonna make, we're gonna make it printing directly on to the album, or to the album, to the paper, and then we're gonna use the large cutoff pieces to make another album after this. So. Um, so anyway, so what I've done is I went through and I took one of each of the patterns out of the paper pad. So I have that aside. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to repeat the paper too much. So I want to go through and use one of each at least before I go and grab another sheet. Now that, that's the idea. I will also have links to this collection um, in the description box below. Um, it might be sold out, but... Um, I hope not, but I will have links to like Amazon and scrapbooking stores and even Etsy. I will have links in the description box below if you want to try to find this paper line. So I thought I would start by, let's see, before I tell you what pages you need, I also wanted to talk to you about, I have already got some stuff set up for embellishing and stuff. So I put it in my uh, box that I made using my large, or not my large, my medium keepsake box. Um, which I will link the video below where I made this. So I've already got like the tickets from the collection and the embellishment pack from the collection and here's the washi tape and then the acetate pieces from the collection. And then I've also brought in some other things like this is, this is cording. I don't know what type of cording, but it's called on a cord is what it's called, but these I had left over. I took extra to the Metacon, so I have left over, but I think it'll go great with this uh, paper collection. So I've already pulled that out, and I've also pulled out some of the things that we've used in the last few albums. So there are the memo clips, which are these right here. So the memo clips by Tim Holtz, and then there's also the, um, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, that was wrong. <laughs> These are the memo clips. You probably can't see them very well. Oh, there you go. The memo clips <laughs> by Tim Holtz and then the index clips by Tim Holtz. I went ahead and pulled those out. And then I have a whole box of rusted things. I will be doing a video on how I rusted these things soon. Um, I've also been sent by, uh, I don't know, like three or four, I'm pretty sure, um, subscribers. I've been sent different types of magnets to try. So I am going to try some new magnets um, in this album. Um, I'm not going to tell you who they're from yet because I don't know um, how good they are. So we're just going to start with, I'm trying some new ones, but you can always use the super magnets that I get from Home Depot. Those are fun um, and easy to find. And then there's also the basic gray magnet disc. Um, these aren't as easy to find, but again, I will try to link as much of this stuff in the description box below as I can. And then I also pulled out, um, let's see, what else do I got out here? I've also got, in the paper collection, I went ahead and took the stickers out of the package 
Um, he, there's the puffy stickers. I've got those ready for embellishing. Then there is the uh, um, uh, chipboard pieces. I went ahead and took those out of the package. I've got those ready in my box over here. And then I also pulled out these are dies. These are dies from when we made this mini album. This is the Mini Everlasting, and this is the LDRS uh, paper, which I do believe she still has. I will link her below. And these are also the dies that we used in this album. So uh, these are the ones, there's more, but I figured since, you know, if you've bought these already, what the heck, let's go ahead. This size album is perfect for these um, these dies. Not all of the ones that we purchased for this album, which by the way, I will link this mini album. Um, I will link the playlist for the, well, I don't know if I can link the playlist. Yes, I can. I, I'll link the uh, playlist for the uh, Everlasting. So we use these dies, so it's the Dainty uh, Doilies Border, and then it's the Gilded Oval Die, and then the Scalloped Swag. I just thought it would be fun to, like, and then like in this one, here we used, um, this is the Everlasting Bundle one we just finished. You know, there's the uh, Memo Clip and the Index Clip, um, and then, they're, they're, you know, I used them all throughout these um, pages. So I just thought it would be fun to use the stuff that we already have. Um, if you don't have them, there'll be links in the description box below if you're interested in them. But these are both in the Everlasting playlist. So this was the second album we made and this was the third. Whoop. And then this was the third. So if you want to check those out, I'll have a link to those playlists below. Um, and then of course with the dies, um, I have these from when we made the mini Everlasting. These are just like ones that I cut out on uh, white cardstock. Just so that when I'm going through and doing the embellishing, I can just lay them on there and see, oh, do I want that? Um, or that looks good or that fits or whatever. So I have these, they're like templates. So I have these set aside for each one of these dies. So I've got these out. I'm super excited to use these again. These were so fun. I just really loved the look that they gave. And I feel like this paper line um, is kind of lending itself to this, you know, I don't know, romantic kind of girly, dainty, you know, old fashioned, I don't know. I just feel like it's gonna lend itself well to that. The only thing I have not pulled out yet is the flowers. I've got a bunch of flowers. I showed you guys that in a video a couple videos ago, but I don't know which ones I wanna use yet, so I don't wanna just open them all up and go from there, you know? Um, I'm, so I'm just kinda holding off on the flowers. But anyway, now all that said, cause I'm super excited to get started, we're gonna be working on the covers. So we're gonna be making the covers first with this one. And let me tell you what you're gonna need. You are gonna need some cream colored um, cardstock. This is just like my white cardstock, except it's cream colored. So it's 110 pound cardstock. Now, if you only have white cardstock, or if you only have 65 pound cream cardstock, we'll use that. That's totally fine. So we're gonna be using these for the covers. We're not, we're not printing anything on them. They're just, we're just using the solid cream. And then we're also gonna need, this is my workbook, by the way, and I didn't make this on camera, but I made this the exact same way I made the Everlasting workbook. I will also link that in the description box below. So then we're gonna need page 10, which is the, um, not the mat for, which is the envelope number two. Uh, we're going to be using the envelope on the cover, and I want you to see something. Oh, we're also going to be using page 11, which is this, and we're, this is the insert for the envelope. So those are the only two pages I've printed out so far, but let me talk to you a little bit about this. So what I've done here is these, the purple back here, I remember I told you I was going to be pulling in some purple. Well, this is the muted backgrounds from my muted background um, template or printable. And this one is number 11. So I'm gonna be using number 11 and number two throughout this mini album. So what I did was I was originally, I printed it off onto, let me find it, onto the white. And I really wasn't liking the way it looked together with this paper line. So then I decided to print it off on the cream and it looks like that. Doesn't that go so much nicer? So see the difference? Um, it's the same, you know, color. It's just printed onto the cream colored cardstock and it just looks so much more soft and vintagey. So that's what I decided to do with this uh, mini album. And I also wanted to show you, this is the green number two in the cream, but there it is. 
um, on the white. So it's the same page, it just looks so different because of it being on the cream. Okay, we are also going to need, these are the mats, this is page two, so, th not the mats, these are the um, covers. We're not going to be printing this directly out onto the cream cardstock, but I have made myself a traceable template, so um, I've already got my mats on top of that traceable template, in case you're wondering uh, why it says matte for cover, that is why, because <laughs> this is the actual cover traceable template. So I'm going to be needing one of these, um, and I'm going to be needing the spine piece. And I still haven't quite decided, you guys, if I want what kind of spine I'm wanting to do with this one. I just haven't decided yet. And then we're going to need a piece of chipboard. This chipboard is medium weight to heavyweight chipboard. Um, you can use lightweight chipboard. That's actually what I've been using uh, when I made the other two albums that I did for Metacon that you guys haven't uh, seen yet. It won't be out for a while. Uh, but, or you can even use recycled material like your cereal boxes or, or whatever. Use whatever you have. You don't have to use this. Um, but I do have this linked in um, the description box below and I think it's my Amazon list. Uh, everything that I use, you'll find there. It's just for quick reference. If you want to see um, the details about it or how much it is or all of that jazz. So, or if you want to purchase it, either way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to lay these on here. So I need two covers. Um, two covers. I'm just going to lay that on there. And you know what? I'm going to scoot it up because that's kind of like a weird edge. I don't have to scoot it up that much. So I'm going to lay that on there. And then I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to trace it out. And then, whoop, can't get it lifted up. And I'm going to scoot it over, line it up to that, and I'm going to trace it out again. And then I'm going to trace the spine piece out, so I'm going to line that up to that line there. Now I'm going to get my mat out. This is a score pal, a scoring mat. Not scoring mat, it's <laughs> a cutting mat. <laughs> Gosh. And I'm going to grab, this is a heavy duty craft knife. This is Stanley. I have this one linked in my Amazon list as well. And the reason I like to use this one is uh, for chipboard is because it's heavy duty. Uh, my other one, I would dull the blade really, really quickly. And you know what? I haven't used this in a while. I wonder if uh, the blade is dull on this sucker. I bet you it might be. That will suck. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Trim this off. If you just take your time and make several passes, nice even passes, whoops, you will be good to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and trim all of these pieces out and separate them, and then I'll be back. All right, so there's all three pieces right there. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put score tape. This is uh, three eighths of an inch or, yeah, three eighths of an inch score tape, but use what you have. And what I'm gonna do is on all three pieces, I'm gonna go around the edges. These are Tim Holtz mini scissors. I'm trying to get used to them. I'm using them more and more and more because it's nice to not have so many scissors. Usually I have three pairs of scissors that I use. <laughs> and this will help um, eliminate uh, two of those pairs. Well, one, because I'm replacing two with one. But you get my point. So um, I'm trying to get used to them. It's just the bigger ones for me are just easier to use. But... 
I think it's just all what you get used to using, you know? Well, you know what I mean? All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it to all three pieces, and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I've got all three pieces with the score tape on them, but I am actually have changed my mind. I think I am not gonna do a hard spine. I think I'm gonna do a soft spine again. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna eliminate this piece here, but I am gonna use it for spacing, so I'm gonna leave it sit there. But what I am going to use is, this is um, <laughs> a stack of Tyvek that my husband cut down for me for the Maidacon albums. Um, we provided the Tyvek for those, so I gave him the wrong number and he cut down way too many. But um, I encourage you to recycle your Tyvek envelopes versus taking them from a post office or anything like that. Um, I did purchase mine off of Amazon, but I actually was really uh, lucky. I got like a um, damaged box, so there was nothing wrong with the envelopes, but the uh, box was completely tore up, so I got it a really, really, really good deal. But anyway, so I'm going to use the Tyvek instead, and I think I'll use two pieces. Um, and these are the exact same size as the covers, in case you're wondering. So if you wanted to, you know, cut your own, they're the exact same size as the covers. So now what I'm going to do is on one of them, I'm going to put score tape all around the edges. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece as a look at how tight that's going to be it's going to be tough to fold over but we all get her done um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to use these I'm just going to draw a line You just kind of have to roundabout it. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna draw a line there, and then I'll move that one. Draw a line here. Draw a line here. I just want to get kind of a general idea of where this tie back needs to go. So then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the backing from here. And then I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac, my Fabri-Tac puppykin, and I'm going to cover the inside of this really well. You could cover the whole thing, whoops, with um, score tape, but you can also just use liquid glue. And you just want to kind of, you be generous, but don't go overboard. And you notice when I do my little circling motions, that kind of spreads the glue out really nicely. So, so then I'm just going to line it up here. I'm just going to hold it up at an angle, and I'm just going to line it up at that line as best I can. Oh, you know what I, I need to do? I should have done this. Mark it a little further past, just so I can line it up good. The cover's good. All right, so then I'm going to push that down. It, I, look, I even got it crooked, but that's totally fine. This is a Teflon bone folder. And I'm going to go ahead and burnish this really good. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to take one of the covers and I'm going to remove the backing off of it and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna cover the inside part of this with the fiber attack I'm getting low on my fiber attack so I'm gonna tilt it on its side so and then I'm just gonna line it up to that I can kind of see through there but since I made those little marks on the top and bottom it's a little bit easier so I'm just gonna line it up right there and lay down and I'm gonna do the same for this one all right, I'm going to line it up. I'm going to flip it around, actually. I'm going to line it up. Top and bottom, best I can. 
lay it down. And so now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take that same bone folder and I'm going to burnish. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I have this tool right here that's called Perfect Trim. Well, I can't even find it myself, so I'm not going to use it. But I'm going to show you a different alternative <laughs> or a different way to use it. But it's meant for these corners here. And like I said, I can't find it myself. So I'm just going to use um, my ruler. And this is a pin blade. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, on the eighth of an inch mark right here, I've got the metal edge. This is a Tim Holtz ruler. And this is the metal edge. And I'm going to try to put that point right on that eighth of an inch right there. Now this isn't going to be perfect, I don't think, but I don't think it'll be too bad. I think it'll work. If not, I guess we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> and then you just want to slice that corner off. So I was pretty generous with the amount that I left there on the corner, just because I don't want to, um, I don't want to mess up. I want to give myself some leeway, you know? So, all right, so we're going to do to all four corners. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stylus. This is um, an EK Tools one. And I'm going to score right up next to the covers. <clears throat> to the covers and the spine. Okay. So then I'm going to tip it up on its side like this, and then I'm going to do that again. Oh, you probably can't see because my hand, arm's in the way. So I'm going to tip it up on its side, and then I'm going to run my bone folder um, along there again. This is not a bone folder. <laughs> my stylus along there again uh, just to help it fold around that chipboard. So then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and prep it just a little bit just to help when it comes to the actual taping it down just kind of like burnish it train it <laughs> all right so now what I want to do is I am going to again I'm going to use score tape I am going to do this but then um, we need to do one more step before we can attach these down so I'm going to do I think I'm going to put I think I'm going to put score tape along those uh, inner parts as well. I could use glue. Yeah. Just because. Why not? It's not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to go ahead and put score tape there. Decisions, decisions. You could use glue though, I think. I think it would be totally fine if you use glue. Okay, so then I think I want to, I think I'm wanting to, I'm going to put a piece of score tape here. Can y'all tell? I'm trying to figure this out as we go since I changed my mind. <laughs> I want to go ahead and add this other piece of Tyvek, so I'm going to go around the edges of this one as well. Okay, then I also think I'm going to go ahead and add tape in here on the Tyvek piece. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove all of that backing off of this and the other Tyvek piece we are getting ready to add on. And then I'm just going to line it up again. I should have tested to see if it fit. And it does. Well, of course it does. All right, so I'm just going to line this up again. I'm going to start at one edge. Just pick an edge. Any edge, Jen, any edge. You, know, you got to be careful. Once that stuff s sticks, it's stuck. There we go. Yeah. Now we got an extra heavy duty, heavy duty spine in there. Okay. 
So now we're going to close these two sides. I like to start on the long strips, um, not, not the uh, little side strips. So I think I'm going to start in the middle here. I'm just going to fold it over and then I'm going to burnish it down really good right there. Right, and then I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the rest of the cover. Like that. Okay, I'll do the same thing to this side. Okay, there we go. Now, these two little short pieces are going to be tricky only because they're so short. So I'm, I'm just pressing down those little corners, the little bits that I left past beyond the um, chipboard when I cut the corners off. I'm just pressing that down just so it's a cleaner, um, cleaner corner. I'm going to remove the backing here. And we're going to hope that this fits. So I'm going to take my bone folder and that will help me smoosh it over evenly. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, so I did get just a little bit, just a little bitty bit of pokies. So I'm just going to trim those off. Yeah. All right, let's do this side. Same way, I'm going to take the backing off. Okay, so there is that part. <laughs> Flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and burnish this really good too. All right, so then the next thing we want to do is we want to do the inside. Now I could, I could print this out like the mats of this. Let me see, do I want to do that? I'm feeling like it'll get covered. So... The mats are on page 15. I do, I feel like it's gonna get covered anyway. So I'm not going, I'm just gonna leave it like, we're just gonna figure it out this way. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take these cover pieces, or these mat pieces actually. I'm gonna lay it on here so that would normally go there. Like that. And then let's just use that whole piece for now. That would normally go there. So we could just let me get the other mat. And that will go there. All right, so I'm just going to measure it, and it ends up being I need a piece that's nine and three fourths. So I'm going to write that down on here, nine and three fourths. So uh, where am I going? I'm going to move this stuff out of the way, and I'm going to get my paper trimmer out. And I'm going to cut this. This is a Fiskars of Precision a paper trimmer. I'm gonna cut this, cut this, and cut this to nine and three fourths, and then I'm gonna lay one of these mats on here. And I'm gonna trace that top line, and then I'm gonna cut that. So that's the height that we need which ends up being approximately six and a quarter. Like that. So then this piece should fit perfectly onto the inside, cover the whole inside, and it does. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put score tape all around the edge of this. So I got score tape around the edge of that, and so now I'm going to put score tape on either side of the spine on the cover pieces. 
So anyway, so we got score tape along the inside mat and we got two pieces of score tape on the spine. I mean, I'm sorry, on the covers on either side of the spine. So there's the spine. So I'm thinking what we're going to do is first, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ink this piece up. This is, we're going to be using the Distress Oxide Walnut Stain again. I tried several other ones, but this was the one that I liked. Um, with, whoa, I just had to re-ink it with um, a re-inker and wow, look at that. Um, and this is a Tim Holtz blending tool. I'm using the rectangle one again. I actually like it better than the round one. Um, but, oh shoot, now my phone's... <sighs> I'm in a group text message, it looks like, and now it's going to start making all kinds of racket. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then let's go ahead. I'm going to take the backing off of this. I'm going to take the backing off of here. I'm going to move that, and I'm going to take the backing off of here, and then I'm going to cover the inside with um, fabric tech. Oops, my sweater. My sweater just got in the tape. Um, I call it a whoopee. It's just like a big, you know, like, you know, um, cardigan type deal. I don't know if cardigan is the right word. <laughs> anyway, um, it's like a jacket. And it's April something. April, I don't even know what today. Fourth. Today's April 4th. And it's freezing outside. It's snowing in places. Not not here at my house yet, but it is snowing close by. It's just unbelievable. It was really warm yesterday. I don't know. Mother Nature's pissed. She's just pissed. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cover this entire bit. And then I'm also going to go ahead and take some just on the spine here just to be sure that I get good contact with the paper. I didn't want to add the tape because I didn't want it to be too thick. This way I can really spread it out and smoosh it down and all of that. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to try to center it top, bottom, side, side, but not always that great at that. Well, that's good enough. So before I press anything down, I'm going to start with the center like this. Hard to not press it down everywhere. <laughs> and I really want to get that contact really good. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and press down the other parts. And we're going to burnish that really good. Okay, I'm not going to start bending this just yet. I'm going to let it dry. So what I'm going to do is we're going to ink it and then um, we're going to start putting that envelope together. So I'm going to ink this front and back with the same walnut stain distress oxide. And I'm not going to bend it yet. So I'm not going to do, I'm not going to ink the edges there. Um, but you know what, what I wait, what I am going to do before I put my cover mats away, I am going to go ahead and trace out what I want to um, cover the front with. So this is one of the papers from the collection. Isn't it soft and pretty? So I'm going to, I'm literally going to do a mat for this one. So I'm going to just take them. And I'm going to try to keep them in order. So let's see here. So, like if the pieces that I cut out, not these, not this. Um, this doesn't have a front and a back. The mat's the same, but all right. So I'm going to trace this one out. Then I'm going to put the spine piece right next to it, line it up. Oops, got it a little crooked. Trace this one out. 
And then I'll lay this one next to that. Whoops. <laughs> Trace this one out. Whoop. I keep saying whoops today. All right, now I'm going to remove all three. And I'm just going to use my scissors this time. So the back side of this has like cut apart pieces, which is cool. Um, so I might be able to use, I should have paid attention to that. Um, well, I should have paid attention to that. What if I come up this way? Okay, so I'm just going, I'm just going to use my scissors because I'm going to distress these edges. So I don't care if it's perfectly straight or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink all three pieces up just on this front side. And then I'll be back. Okay, so they're going to go like this. There's the back. There's the front. There's the spine. It's going to look a pretty. Okay, so I'm going to just take my fingernail. You can use a distressing tool or you can use your scissors. But I'm just going to take my fingernail. I really like doing this. This is like my new favorite thing. It's not my new favorite thing. I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> but it, it makes me happy. I just like the look of it. I just like the look of something that's been around for a while. It just, I don't know. I'm a very nostalgic type person. Something that's been handled, something that's been loved, you know. And I'm just, just breaking down some of the corners, some of the edges. So it looks more like that. It looks more like that than the straight, you know. I think I just think it gives it a little bit extra something. something. So I'm gonna do that to all three pieces. A little extra something. All right, so now I've got all of those um, ready to go, but I'm still not going to attach them down. What I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this ready. This is the envelope number two on page 10. So we're going to cut this out, and I'm just going to use my scissors. So remember, I printed the muted background number 11 onto the cream cardstock first, and then I printed the page number 10 in note paper on top of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this out. This is so easy. There's a lot of straight cuts. I know it probably doesn't look like it, uh, but there are. So, like even on this part here, if you just do the straight cut first, and I'm gonna put this aside, um, and then come back and do the curved edges, it just makes life easier. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and just come back and gently go around the corner there, that rounded corner, and around that corner. I'm going to cut that a little bit better. I didn't cut it so nicely. All right, so then there's that piece, and then... Oh, then we also need, this is the insert, so when I printed it off, I tried to get this little lady there on to the insert that goes in there and these pretty little flowers. Plus, I was paying attention to where this envelope was going to print out, just in case um, um, I wanted to use it. Well, I'm, I know I'm going to use it at some point in this album, but I just wanted it to look nice wherever it ended up landing, whatever page it ends up landing on. Oops. So again, I'm just going to go through and trim all the straight edges. So before I trim any more on this, I wanted to show you an easy way. You can do this before you trim the whole thing out too if you want to. This is an EK Tools scoreboard and then there's an EK Tools stylus and I'm just going to score right there. So then when I fold it, like that, I can then come back and 
cut both corners out at the same time. And they'll be nice and even. Like that. Right? So all of the corners are cut out, just like that. The only thing that bothers me about doing it that way is it leaves this like little bit on this inside um, part there, and that bothers me. I don't like it. <laughs> All right, so we got that ready. Now we're gonna go ahead and score the envelope. So score all four lines. You can't hardly even tell that there's any purple in there, can you? But it is purple. I did want to, I just wanted to bring some of that pretty purple into the album entirely and then into the covers as well. Just as it, you know, just so you know that there's going to be purple in there. So then we're going to go through and, oh, did I not get the, yeah, I didn't, I didn't uh, score very hard. Go through and burnish all of these score marks. I usually like to go through and fold them and burnish them the way in which they're actually going to be. I don't know why. I just feel like it um, works better that way. Right? So we got that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and ink. I'm going to ink the inside of this and the outside. All right. So I have them inked. So my thought is, I'm going to move these two aside. Um, this is the front cover. So my thought is... I was gonna maybe do an envelope on the front cover, like so. So let me know, you guys, what you think in the comment section below. Let me know if you like the way this is looking so far. I just I love it. Okay. <laughs> be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And be sure to check the description box below for all the links to everything that I have referred to in the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the circle right here. And then here is a link to my shop if you're interested in the templates and the build embellishments and stuff. And there might be some other videos that you see on the screen. So I will see you guys next time.